How's it going everybody? This is Vita Bush. Today I'm going to share with you 10 of my best personal finance moves that led me to financial independence. I'm going to share these in chronological order starting from when I was little. Pay attention to the strategy rather than the dollar amount here. This video is brought to you by Moomoo, the commission-free trading app. Open up an account and you can get one free share of stock. If you deposit $100, you can get 10 free shares of total stock. And if you deposit $1,000, you can get 20 free shares of total stock. Check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Sometime like in first grade, I started getting a $2 allowance and I would spend it once every other week. So every two weeks, I would save about $38 or so. I remember being able to save upwards of $150. I would have like this little drawer that's locked with a key and everything. I would put all my money in there. Whenever I have too many coins, I would try to exchange it for bills instead. But when I do spend my allowance, it would be at the school snack bar and they sell things like, in Cantonese, it's called waitalai. It's this soybean drink thing. It's either in chocolatey flavor or just soybean milk flavor. Back then they sold it in large glass bottles. Even at a young age, I was never told, hey, you should save your allowance. My mom just gave it to me and just say, hey, spend it. So I was born this way where I dreamt of buying something bigger, something that I actually wanted rather than just keep on wasting it on the same exact drink or the same bag of chips. So you could say I might have had a predisposition to have a delayed gratification. You know the marshmallow test, if you're able to delay your gratification, you tend to have better life outcomes. How do you improve this? This would probably be a topic for another video. Around freshman year in high school, I took a computer programming class that is in basic. A friend knew that I was into it. He was in yearbook class and he needed all the names to be alphabetized by first and last name. The last name needs to be alphabetized first. If they have the same last name, that in itself needs to be alphabetized as well. So I think I worked on it for like a couple of days or so, made a computer program, put it on like a little floppy disk. I had like a how to operate this program, right? You type it into the prompt, put in an input file, and then you get the output file that's all sorted. I would be paid two yearbooks. So then when I finally got paid, I took one, sold it, I think I got like 60, $70 for it or something. And then I got a free yearbook. I would have bought one anyway. That meant I was paid what, like 120 ish. The lesson here is, well, you gotta monetize your skills. We had graphing calculator. So I looked up how you can overclock your calculator. Many people don't know how to solder. They don't know how to read schematics. So electronics was my hobby. So then I went on a place called DigiKey, which is somewhere you can order surface mount capacitors and like a little switch. And at first I did it to my own calculator and I demonstrated it to my friends in this advanced placement calculus class. When they saw it, they're like, oh my gosh, this is great. You know, they can graph three times faster. And at the time, this really mattered a lot because you wanna complete your homework faster. When you're taking exams, you can complete the questions faster. People started asking me to do it to their calculators. Of course, I'm not gonna do it for free. I think I helped my girlfriend at the time and did it for free for her. But everybody else, I charged $20. I think I ended up selling like five of them. It's just kind of like a prestige thing almost. I didn't make that much money from it, but everybody that had this upgrade, they were like raving about it. And then I had a little switch that swapped in and out the capacitor. So you can change the speed because when the speed is really high, it would actually drain more battery. So this is just another example of monetizing your skills. Here's another interesting one. At 19, I was working at a job. The company went bankrupt and they owed me actually like two or three weeks worth of pay. As soon as they stopped paying me, I stopped working there. This is very important that whenever they stiff you, you have to stop work immediately. I've been to startups where they stop paying you altogether and people just keep on working. And I'm like, changed jobs already and I'm wondering why they're still there. Anyway, I had access to a lot of the company equipment that wasn't being used anymore because it went bankrupt. All of this equipment just was in a storage. I took all this equipment and started listing them one by one on eBay. I treated it like a summer job. In the end, I sold about 20 to 30K worth of goods over a period of one summer. I took those proceeds and paid what I was owed. 
and I calculated the hours I worked in listing all that stuff on eBay. I think they were paying me some, some measly amount at the real job, maybe like $10 an hour or something like that. So I just made up some number, right? Because I'm the boss. I have the money in my bank. I can just name whatever amount that I want to pay myself. So I name something pretty fairly large, like $25 an hour or so. And I took 25 multiplied by the number of estimated hours that I work. And then surprisingly, I still have a lot of money left over and I returned the rest to the company. Just a win, win, win for everybody. My first job out of college, I was working for a startup. The writing was on the wall that this company is not doing very well. I can see that their inventory is not going anywhere. I was talking to the finance lady and then she's just, you know, the tone is not very right. And, you know, she would hint at me, you know, it's like things are not doing too well. She didn't really outright say, you know, go for, look for a job, but you know, you can kind of tell by the mood of the entire company. Usually there are lots of hints and you have plenty of time to look for a new job. And so when I finally did, I jumped ship and I was actually the last person that got paid out all their PTOs, close to a month's worth of pay. And this is significant, right? It's like many thousands of dollars. Many, many years later, I found out that because they have a cash crunch problem, they cannot afford to pay all their employees. So they started offering half stock, half cash compensation. It's like, hey, you know, here's some paper money. Are you gonna take it? Well, if it's like a Google, sure, you know. But in the end, the stocks expired almost worthless. I used to drive a Porsche Boxster. I have to say Porsche because people really get annoyed when I say Porsche, Porsche Boxster. Anyway, I have a lot of experience fixing it myself. The air oil separator broke and it suddenly did a lot of smoke right on the freeway in San Jose. So then I'm like, oh my gosh, something is going wrong with the car. Let me just drive it to the nearest mechanic. And I parked it there. I had to had someone drive me home later on. They called me up and said, hey, you know, it's gonna take like many, many thousands of dollars to fix it because you blew a head gasket or something like that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it costs so much money. I don't know if I can afford or I actually I could afford it. But then I just didn't want to pay it because I felt like I was being scammed. I took action. I went down there. I just kind of poked my nose around took a lot of pictures. Somehow this got the guy really nervous thinking that maybe I'm investigating him or something and then started offering to not charge me for the inspection fee, which was like four or $500. Instead, I forgot if he lowered it to zero or like it was only like, you know, a hundred dollars. But because the car was really dirty, I can see if anyone touched it in certain places or not. And I can see that they didn't even look at it. They didn't even open the hood or anything. I got the car towed home for free through this triple A 100 mile towing service. And then once it's at home, I started researching online on how the heck do you fix this thing? I tried two or three different things on fixing the air oil separator. There's some kind of oxygen to fuel ratio sensor. And in the end, I was able to fix it myself for, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars only instead of like three or $4,000. What's the lesson here? I'd say you can get ripped off very, very easily with a mechanic. Maybe when you're trying to change oil, they pretend to change oil. Scams happen mostly when you're not knowledgeable in the area and you have to rely on some expert and they tell you something and they scam you that way. But with the internet these days, you can probably look on ChatGPT and just ask it, hey, you know, what do you think is wrong with it? And with a little bit of research online, you might be able to troubleshoot it yourself. Buying a house is probably the single most large contributing factor from my total net worth. I got it for around 500K or so, and right now is 1.3 million. So about $800,000 of paper gains, not including taxes or anything if I ever sell it. But the story goes like this. I work for like three or four years or so, you know, I have like $100,000 saved up already. And at the time, real estate was already very expensive, but I could not afford a home yet. I was looking for like a year or two and finally 08 happened and it crashed the prices quite a bit. And suddenly there's my in. So I think the frugal thing probably is me having a down payment ready to go 
but I did not pull the trigger right away. I just kind of waited around until there's a great opportunity. And around 2010, the prices were very, very reasonable. And I pulled the trigger and got it at a very, very good price. There's also the time where I specifically called out buying Tesla stock because I wanted to own a Tesla. I knew that the Tesla stock is not going to 10X although it probably did if you bought it early enough. But because it increased in value quite a bit already, I kind of assume, you know, it might do like 2X or 4X or so. So then I bought around $20,000 of Tesla and it went up all the way to $80,000 enough to buy me a Tesla. You can say, oh yeah, you gotta pay capital gains tax on it and all. It's around the price of a Tesla, give or take 10 or 15K or so. So that Tesla Model 3 performance sitting in my garage all paid for in Tesla stock. Not to mention that since then, I wrote it off as a business expense. By the way, they reinstated the referral program on buying a Tesla. So if you guys are interested in a Tesla, check out my referral link. You can get some points. I think now you can trade those points to get 500 supercharger miles. So it's not as good, it used to be 1,000. But now you can actually trade those points for other swag, like whiskey cups. Maybe you can get that 20 coil wireless charger thing. It's like way over engineered where you can put your phone anywhere on that charge pad and it'll still work. Thanks for watching this video. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.